Warning, this story contains artistic depictions of sexual conduct. All characters in the story are over the age of 18. Any similarities to real people living or dead are coincidental. Alright, so welcome back to episode 2 of this uh, the sweetest monster. We've come a, a fair bit of a way. Um, protagonist has had a fight with his wife, went running off to a bridge where he encounters a cat from his past. And they are, I can say reconciling, but catching up for lost time. Essentially, I don't know where this is going to go based on the fact that they have a warning at the beginning. I, I'm have a pretty good idea, but we're going to continue from here. So this is where we left off in the last episode. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. This dream, nightmare, hallucination, whatever you want to call it, it's become too real. I was playing along until now, waiting to wake up, but it never happened. I don't think I'll ever wake up. A bizarre fantasy has impeded upon my mundane life, sticking to my skin and chilling my bones. It clings to me, one skinny arm threaded through mine, and stares at me with big round eyes. Penetrating. <laughs> the pause was there mostly because I was trying to see if I could use my keyboard to continue the text rather than clicking my mouse, but apparently the mouse has to have the, the, the final say, so... Her chest is small, much like the rest of her body, but they feel soft, pressed against my arm. I don't know if she'd noticed, or was that her intention all along. Her bare arms are exposed to the biting wind, the falling rain, but she doesn't shiver. Her body is cold, but it feels yielding at the same time. Which is, you know, she is a demon, or a... I don't know what a deity, after all. She's not human, she's not a ghost. For all her talk about being a spirit, a demon, a monster, she looks like a young girl to me. She's so short I could rest my chin atop, on the top of her bobbled, bobbed black head. I said bobbled. She must be around the same height as Melly, give or take a few inches. I want to be with you all the time. I want to help you as you helped me and give you a shoulder to cry on when things get tough and a smiling face to congratulate when things go well. I wouldn't be alive without your sacrifice, so I belong to you now. I'm all yours. Oh no. What? What does she mean, all yours? Humans aren't, any, aren't objects of any one person to possess, no matter what marriage contracts may have you believe. Though Sally shares my last name on legal documents, she still publishes her translations under her maiden name. We've been married for almost two decades, but we do not belong to one another. I couldn't force Sally to obey me even if I tried, which I haven't, because I like to think it like I respect her. Because I like to think that I respect her. Ooh. Ooh. But respect doesn't count for all that much when neither of us is particularly likes one another. Damn. So it's one of those marriages where it's like you've fallen out of love. Belle isn't a human, anyway. She's not even a cat. I don't know what she is. Maybe there are different rules in regarding to possessions when it comes to non-human entities. If there are, I wouldn't know. I've never met a spirit before. You heard me. I want to devote myself to you, my entire being. My each and every eyelash belongs to you, and the dirt beneath my fingernails, and the teeny tiny bones inside my toes. Totally not psychotic. I wouldn't be able to appear before you in this body if you hadn't saved me, so I owe you. I owe you a lot, in more ways than one. Without you, I would not even be alive. The cold wind makes me shiver. I should have worn my coat. Why didn't I wear my coat? 
I must have been in too much of a hurry. The argument I had with Sally made my blood boil. I needed to escape before I suffocated. The cold air was good for me at first. It cleared my mind. But now, I feel uncomfortable. She's standing close, far too close. She smells of the rain. Her hair sticks to her forehead and her breasts are pressed against my arm. It's cold, but I'm starting to feel warm. Uncomfortably so. Oh. Belle's eyes green, uh, green eyes flash like the colored bands strapped inside glass marbles. One more thing. I'm still rather weak. I can maintain a human form, but I can only use it for a short while. Human bodies are difficult to main materialize into being, even for a spirit such as myself. You're so intricate, like grandfather clocks. You'd never think it, but inside here... She taps her chest, but I don't think she's telling me to stare at her breast, which... What little she has. <laughs> Rather, she's imploring me to look beyond that, right past her skin, into the inner workings of her alien, unfamiliar body. There's so much stuff going on all the time. So many organs and muscles. So much blood. My whole body is tethered together with cord and wire run by electrical impulses, impulses, neurons firing in my brain. It's very hard to focus on maintaining such a precarious, delicate existence for so long. It's exhausting. If I let my guard down for even a moment, I just disappear into thin air like a candle being blown out. I've never heard anybody talk about the human body in such an impassioned way. It's strange, since Belle isn't even a human herself. Maybe that's why she's so eager. People always get interested in the unknown. Why else do so many people long for the good old days? We all do it. Nostalgia hearkening back to the past when we didn't even not even enjoy at the time. True. The grass is always greener. Again, true. Everything becomes more attractive with distance, even the finer workings of the human body. Perhaps if I was not a human being, I would also find this respiratory system endlessly fascinating. Wasn't being a cat just as difficult? They have a lot of little bones too. Mm, being a cat was difficult, but I grew used to it. A few decades will do that to you. Being a human, however, is rather new. I still need some time. You've not assumed a human form before? Even as I ask the question, I feel myself wince. My left eye twitches. I must sound like such a fool. This isn't the kind of thing I should say. This discourse of has no place in civilized conversation. It's kind of like a fast, fanciful dialogue that might exist in a young adult novel or TV show. But real life? My life? Not a chance. But I still ask all the same, and Belle responds in turn. She doesn't even blink. Of course I have. How else would I know how to speak? It all comes with practice. You mean like riding a bike? Yep. Once you've done it, you don't forget. But it's been a while. Define a while. I can't. Spirits live longer than humans, so my perception of time is a bit off. But if you had to guess... I don't know. The last time I was human was maybe 40 years ago. But I've been alive a lot longer than that. Longer than you could imagine. Wow. Uh, I don't know what to say. Should I turn it into a joke? Uh, that might be for the best if I don't want to go insane. Presuming I haven't already. I don't know if I feel comfortable about this. I should probably ask my mother for permission before I start chatting to such an old lady. <laughs> oh, he's cracking a joke. Belle giggles and swats at me playfully like a cat batting at a bird's carcass. I see she wasn't lying when she said she's been a cat for so long. I'm surprised she hasn't tried to lick me yet. <laughs> or herself. <laughs> ah, I'd love to stay and chat, but I can feel myself getting faint. I might have to take my leave soon. But this won't be the last time you see me. I'll make sure of that. 
With that cheery exclamation, Belle stands on her tiptoes and plants a small kiss on the tip of my nose. The gesture is unexpected and strangely sweet. I stare at her stupidly. Alright, Robin. I'll see you. Much, much sooner than you may think. <laughs> I'm not sure if I could take that as a threat or not. And what's with her hee hee? She isn't a cute squirrel girl. No matter how hard she's trying, she isn't even a girl at all. She's a spirit. Something vague and unfixed, like a breath of air. Do spirits have genders? Did we assume human assume a female form is an act of whimsy? A silly joke? I wonder. But I don't have time to ask. I blink once, twice, and Bella has already vanished, her back melting into the surrounding darkness. I collapse against the railing of the bridge, sapped of strength. The iron bars are cool against my back, but my face feels hot. My nose tingles. I can still feel her lips pressed against it, that soft and girlish kiss. I hold one hand against my nose gingerly, as though it belongs to somebody else, a different man. A better man, perhaps, whose li who wife still loves him, and whose daughter does not hide her room, hide in her room every time he comes back home. Ah, why am I thinking about Millie now, about Sally? Maybe it's guilt. Better be. It's because deep down inside, though, I try to tell myself otherwise. I'm happy. Such a pretty young girl kissed me. Of course I am. Despite the falling rain, her body really was warm. 